Αγίος ο Θεός, Αγίος ισχυρός, Αγίος αθάνατος, ελέησον ημάς. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. Aeos o Theos, Aeos Ischiros, Αιώσα θάνατο ελέισον ημά. Blessed is our God always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Restore sanesti ek necron, thanato, thanaton patisas ketis entis mi masi. Zoin Hanisamenos. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and to those in the tombs he has granted life. Thanaton patisas ketis entis mi masi zoin harisameno. Amo mi enodo, alleluia, evloito si kirie didaxon meta dikeo meta su, alleluia. My soul has always longed for your judgments, alleluia. My soul has grown weary from sorrow, strengthen me with your words, alleluia. Incline my heart to your revelations and not to greed. Alleluia. Despair took hold of me because of the sinners who spurn your law. Alleluia. I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your commands. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now and always and forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great goodness. We pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the soul of God's servant Aristotle, departed this life, and for the forgiveness of every sin, whether deliberate or unintended. 
that the Lord God will establish the soul of the righteous to dwell God's mercies, the kingdom of heaven, the remission of his sins. Let us ask Christ, our mortal King and God. And let us pray to the Lord. For you are the resurrection life, for a departed servant of Aristotle, O Christ our God, and to you we give glory. As your Father is from everlasting, your all holy and life giving spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Your hands have made me and formed me, enlightened me that I may lear- learn your commandments. Have mercy on me, O Lord. For I have shriveled like a wineskin in the frost, yet I have not forgotten your just decrees. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I am your own, save me, for I have sought your commandments. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I have not spurned your judgments, for you have instructed me. In return for your mercies, my heart is set on following your commandments until the ages of ages. Have mercy on me, O Lord. It is time for the Lord to act, for they have broken your law. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now and always and forever and ever. Amen. Have mercy on me, O Lord. I am young and despised, but have not forgotten your commandments. Hallelujah. Hear my voice, O Lord, in your steadfast love. Quicken me in your justice. Hallelujah. Princes have pursued me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. Alleluia. My soul shall live and praise you, and your law shall be my support. Alleluia. Like a lost sheep, I have gone astray. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commandments. The choir of the saints has found a source of life and the gateway up to paradise. May I also find the way through repentance. I am a sheep that was lost, O Savior, call me back and save me. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. In the beginning you formed me out of nothing honoring me with your divine image. But when I disobeyed your commands, you returned me to the earth from which I was taken. Restore me to that likeness, that the ancient beauty may be formed anew. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. I am an image of your indescribable glory, though I bear the scars of my sins. Master, take pity on the work of your hands, and in your loving kindness cleanse me. Grant me the homeland for which I yearn. Make me once again a citizen of paradise. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. Give rest, O God, to your departed servant, and assign him a place in paradise, where the ranks of the saints and the righteous, O Lord, will shine forth as lights. To your servant now asleep will you grant rest, overlooking all of his offenses. Glory to the Father and the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Let us radi- let us the valley praise the one Godhead. As radiant Trinity singing holy, are you everlasting Father, co-eternal Son and divine Spirit. Illumine us who worship you in faith and deliver us from the eternal fire. Now and always and forever and ever, amen. Rejoice, majestic Lady, who for the salvation of the world gave birth to God in the flesh. Through you, humankind has found redemption. Through you may we find paradise, pure and blessed. 
זה אותו קול. הללויה, 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 glory to you, O oh God. הללויה, 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 glory to you, O oh God. הללויה, 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 דוק ססיו תאוס. Give rest, O oh Christ. Give rest among the saints to the soul of your servant where there is no pain nor sorrow nor grieving but love is not accompanied by sorrow what glory remains unchanged on earth all things are flimsier than shadows more deceptive than dreams in but an instant death displaces everything but in the light of your countenance O oh Christ in the sweetness of your beauty give rest to him whom you have chosen For you love mankind. Every mortal is like a flower that withers, A passing dream that vanishes. Yet when the trumpet sounds, All the dead will rise up as in an earthquake To meet you, Christ our God. Will you then, Master, assign a place Where your saints abide, for the soul of him whom you have summoned from our midst. All human pursuits are vain, they have no being after death. Wealth does not remain, glory does not accompany along the way. Once death befalls, all these vanish utterly. So let us cry to the immortal Christ, Give rest to those who have left our company in the dwelling place of all who rejoice. Where is all our attachment to worldly pursuits? Where is all the vain display of passing things? Where is the gold, where the silver, the hustle and bustle, household servants? Everything is dust, ashes, shadow. Let us then cry out to the immortal King, Lord, deem worthy of everlasting blessings those who have departed from us and give them rest in ageless blessedness. I call to mind the prophet, crying, I am but dust and ashes, and I studied the tombs once more, considered the naked bones, and ask myself now which of these was king and which the common soldier which was the rich man which the indigent which man was a bride and which a sinner but lord in your compassion to your servant give rest among the righteous Your creating command became my beginning and my being, for it was your will to bring together visible and invisible nature. To fashion me a living creature, you shaped my body from the earth, then gave me a spirit by your divine and quickening breath. Wherefore, O oh Savior, give rest to your servant, in the land of the living, where the righteous dwell. When in the beginning you created man in your own image and likeness, you placed him in paradise to have dominion over all your creation. 
But beguiled by the devil's envy, he tasted of the fruit, becoming a violator of your commandments. Thus you sentenced him, O Lord, to return to the earth from which he was taken, and to plead for repose. I weep and lament when I ponder death, when I see our beauty formed in God's image, lying in the tombs bereft of form, disfigured without glory, all the wonder of it. How did this mystery befall us? How were we given over to decay? How were we paired with death? Surely as it is written by the command of God, who gives rest to the departed. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Your death, O Lord, became the cause of immortality. For had you not lain in the tomb, then paradise would not have been opened. Wherefore, as loving God, give rest to him who is now parted from us now and always and forever and ever amen pure virgin gateway for the word mother of our god intercede for his soul that his soul may know mercy Macaria, Por evis himeron, o titi masisi, topos anapavseo. Blessed ever be the way, the way on which you walk this day, for there is prepared for you a place of everlasting rest. Macaria iudos, i por evis imeron, o titi masisi, topos anapavseos. Let us be attentive. I will cry out to you, O Lord. Wisdom. The reading is from the first letter of the Holy Apostle Paul to the Thessalonians. Let us attend. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant, considering those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Peace be unto you, the reader. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. The readings from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Let us be attentive. The Lord said to those Jews who came unto him, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. 
He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can do nothing on my own authority. As I hear, I judge, and my authority is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great goodness. We pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great good... Or again, we pray for the repose of the soul of God's servant Aristotle, departed this life for the remission of his sins and and forgive of every sin, whether deliberate or unintended. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. That the Lord God will establish the soul of the righteous dwell, God's mercy, the kingdom of heaven, the remission of his sins, let's ask Christ our mortal King and God. Grant this to us, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. O God of spirits and of all humankind, as you trampled down death, overthrowing the evil one, granting life to your world, will you, Lord, grant rest to your servant Aristotle? Now asleep in death, in a place of light, in a place of renewed life, a joyous place, shunned alike by pain, sorrow, and sighing. Every sin he may have committed in word, deed, or thought, has a good and loving God forgive. For no one can live and not sin. You're alone without sin. Your righteousness endures forever, and your word is truth. For you, the resurrection of life, repose your departed servant, Aristotle, O Christ our God, and to you give glory as your fathers from everlasting, your holy and life-giving spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, O God, our glory to you. May he who is sovereign of the living and the dead as his mortal king rose from the dead, Christ our true God, through the prayers of his all pure holy mother, of the holy glorious and praise with the apostles, of the holy God-bearing fathers, of the holy glorious forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of his beloved friend Lazarus, the holy and just, who laid four days in the tomb. And of all the saints, assign the soul of his servant Aristotle departed from our midst, where the righteous dwell, granting him rest in the bosom of Abraham and numbering him among the just. And may he have mercy on us, for he is good and loves mankind. May your memory be eternal, our dear brother, worthy of blessedness and never to be remembered. May your memory be eternal, our dear brother, worthy of blessedness and never to be remembered. May your memory be eternal, our dear brother, worthy of blessedness and never to be remembered. May his memory be eternal. May his memory be eternal. May his memory be eternal. such a beautiful time of year this year, uh, uh, this time of year being the Paschal season, remembering Christ, uh, commemorating, celebrating his death and resurrection. We, there's a special thing that, uh, you know, we've been given this wonderful gift by God of life, and often, too often we take it for granted. We go through our lives doing different things, involved in, in many things, and we forget that our first and foremost purpose of our creation is to be in communion with God. And you can look in, throughout the Bible and you see 
uh, a record pretty much of man coming to God and, le- and leaving God and coming back to God and leaving God. And that's what we kind of do. And we do that in our lives all the time. And finally, our Lord came, God in his divine plan, he came to save us. He came to break this, uh, this the power death had over us in the fall. And coming, and he lived with us. He taught us. He had miracles. And then he suffered and died for us. And we, as Christians, as the church has for 2,000 years, as it has been prophesied by all the prophets and everything in the Old Testament, that the Messiah would come and that he would set everything straight. And he did set everything straight. Now, of course, oftentimes we are looking like the Jews did, where we were looking mainly for an earthly Messiah, something to to vanquish all of the evil in the world. And that will happen when Christ comes again. But what he did was he healed the barrier that was between us and and God and him. He healed that barrier with his that barrier that with his death and resurrection. We were given this incredible gift by him of eternity. You know, we're not immortal beings that we had no beginning. We have a beginning but we've been given this gift that we have no ending. And this, the, the life we live now and the life we choose now is how we, uh, is going to affect what happens later. Um, you know, and all throughout the funeral service that we just heard, whether it was the Psalms you're being chanted, whether it was the Iviomala, the hymns that were being said, chanted, it was, it talked about you know, the, the Psalms definitely talked about the separation of man from God. And the Eviomala that St. John of Damascus wrote very beautifully, it talked about that death is the great equalizer. Death, it doesn't matter what our stature was in this life. It doesn't matter if we were rich or poor or king or a beggar. It doesn't matter. We all are going to face the same thing. Uh, we all are going to face death and the judgment. And Christ, though, came to heal that so that it is not uh, a permanent uh, position for us, death is. So if we just respond, and the wonderful thing, and so like this Paschal season and every Paschal season, and as we are chanting and through up into the ascension, we're seeing, we sing Christ is risen from the dead by death, trump upon death, granting life to those in the tombs. It's something that should stir all of us constantly that our Lord is victorious over everything in the world and that we should not be let the world or the things in the world take us from that joy of his resurrection. All of this is temporal, all of it. And, you know, uh, there are times when we think we're going through hard times and uh, trying to overcome them, and that's happened all before. It's ha- there's been wars, there's been plagues, there's been all kinds of tragedies before, but there have been people that have rose up and were above that and lived above that and showed the love of God above that. We have the history of all of our saints who, you know, have, have the 400 years that Greece suffered under Turkish imprisonment, you know, occupation, for central and southern Greece, it was 400 years. For northern Greece and the rest of the Balkans, it was 500 years. It wasn't until World War I that, that the northern, Gre- northern Greece and the rest of the Balkans were freed from the Ottomans. And all during that time of the, all that oppression, you, have, you see saints like St. Cosmas uh, Etalos, who went all through Greece preaching and, 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 and lifting up people and, and, and give, inspiring them to continue and teaching and and, and, and we saw the incredible love there. And after 400 years, it, the, the oppression fell away. The oppression was taken away. And, and, the people, and we were allowed to thrive again. Of course, nothing is always permanent in, in this situation because there, there, are, there are wars that happen too. And people go through uh, tragedies. But we should not let things dis, uh, disappoint us in the situation. And right now, it's, it is disappointing that our churches are empty, you know, we, in this situation. And that, you know, we, our love, our, our community, our loved ones can't be here because of an epidemic. Um, it's sad. 
but we will get through it, and we will, and and uh, and we'll, we will be one as a community, and hopefully, you know, our our extended family can be here celebrating, uh, remembering, commemorating Aristotle here, um, and the hard work he did throughout his life. Um, when I get, when I came here almost 21 years ago, I mean, I found out very quickly about the lunchbox, <laughs> you know. I was introduced to the board of directors uh, there, <laughs> and, uh, and his hard work, and that is, is really a tribute, the hard work and love and caring that, you know, that, how that survived and how that was so wonderful. Um, we need to take these, these precious people that are in our lives, they're part of us, they help make up who we are. And, you know, because we all have, we all have an effect on each other. And that effect either shapes us positively or it can shape us negatively. And I guess the question that we can all ask ourselves is do we have a positive effect on people with love? Or is it the opposite? You know, because of the way we are, it, it drives people away. But it, that, that, that those people in our lives that have left an impact on us, we need to thank God for that. We need to uh, thank him that we had that opportunity, that he's given us these, these gifts uh, of people in our lives, of various peoples, everybody with different talents. Everybody, everybody, everybody is so unique, and which makes things very wonderful. It's, it could be trying at times, but it's very wonderful. Because if everybody was exactly the same, it would be very boring. But everybody is unique. And, um, and we have these wonderful people that give us these examples. And, and that becomes part of us. And we honor them through the way we live. And hopefully we're honoring Christ by the way we're living too. I mean, we bear his name as Christians. What are we doing with that? Are we, are we living up to the example uh, that our Lord left us? He left us a life, uh, uh, an example of pure sacrificial love is what he did. It's not about an individual. It's not about me. It's about everyone. You know, there's a saying in the, that the, uh, uh, the fathers of the church say, we, we go to heaven together and we go to hell all by ourselves. Um, it's, it, as a Christian, we're called to put God number one, everyone around us number two, and then we are in line at the end. We, we, that's the way we're, it's sacrificial love. It's not about me. And that's what, you know, is so, so sorely needed in our world. I, I, I joke sarcastically, but it's true. I mean, it's true. You know, the, the modern ethos of our world is, the modern trinity of the world is me, myself, and I. It's all, you know, everybody wants, it's what am I getting out of this? What is my, instead of showing love to each other, going out of our way to do something for someone else and rejoicing that maybe we had a little hand in, in lifting someone up a little bit. Maybe someone, maybe someone caught a glimpse of God's love through us. Maybe I became an instrument in some small way um, that, that I've put my own will aside and have allowed our Lord to shine th through. So there are times, especially now at times when we have a funeral, it's definitely a time to take stock of our own, you know, to pray for the individual uh, and, and thank God that for him, but also to take st stock of our own lives. Are we focused in the right direction? And if not, let's change it. I mean, our Lord is all merciful and loving. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, as long as we come to him, he's there to embrace us completely. And so we have, you know, uh, this, uh, this special time of year during the Paschal season, our, our, our Lord, Lord's triumph, uh, really take it to heart, the purpose of our lives, and that is to live with Christ. So may, may Aristotle be blessed, and uh, you will have an opportunity now to uh, pay your respects, and then we will depart. Come, brethren, let 
us give one final sign of affection to the departed, even as we thank God, for he has now left his kin and hastens toward the grave, no longer troubled about vain things or the toilsome, the toilsome body. Where now, where a family and